Arunji, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Vision India Forum <coughs> Road to 2047. Now, this is uh, various issues that we will be covering every month. Today, we'll be talking about labor, the issue which is inextricably linked to a country's growth. India has a demographic dividend and it is a leader in the space of manpower today in terms of population at least. Whether the population is pointing towards a demographic dividend or not, whether that dividend has been or has been or could be harnessed <clears throat> to a national potential, what are the challenges? What are the benefits? And you know, today we are in the in the phase of transition, inflection point, wherein technology is taking over every sphere of an average Indian's life. <clears throat> Labor is not been left aloof from this particular phenomena. The gig workers is a major, major, major segment of the entire labor force, which has two components. The ones who do not use technology or platforms, the ones who use technology and platforms. <clears throat> so we'll be discussing through you <clears throat> all the issues around labor. With your experience as former additional secretary, Ministry of Labor, Government of India. And you have a wide experience of almost 40 years, more than 40 years now, uh, spanning more than 40 years, wherein you could take us through your journey, also as an administrator, because you've seen things from the closest quarters on the ground. <clears throat> Who better than you to take us through the journey of labor than the former additional secretary, Government of India, Ministry of Labor, Sri Arun Kumar Sina, 83 batch UP Kheda. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Amitji. Uh, <clears throat> labor sector is a very interesting field and very important also. Uh, if we see the history, the evolution of the labor uh, <clears throat> sector, uh, in 1919, International Labor Organization was formed. And uh, <clears throat> we were, uh, India was not even a uh, country at that time, but we were also a member of that ILO from uh, the beginning, from the inception. And uh, naturally, when we become a member, then this Ministry of Labor they were born which were in 20, 25, 27. So, uh, 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 so this, uh, I mean, after independence, of course, we had our constitution and accordingly uh, labor was put in the concurrent list where uh, both uh, central government and state government, they were given their task and uh, their jurisdiction to do. Uh, in the beginning, uh, in the labor department, uh, basically it was more of uh, 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 solving problems through legislation. Because uh, one thing most important at that time after industrial uh, revolution was that safety of the labor of the people is very important. And then uh, industrial relation, when industry start coming, then industrial relation also becomes very important, like line order for general public, but uh, uh, industry started promulgated and so much so that uh, we had before right, the government uh, to have a regulation in the various fields connected with the labor and similarly the state government they also had uh, concurrent powers so they also almost 150 
and obliterating the labor sector and as well as naturally uh, industry or employer who is one of the partner and the second is the labor and the ministry plays like a referee that uh, balance is made we all know that uh, it's very important that both should grow uh, employer the industry should grow and side by side labor they are not exploited their uh, basic rights are protected uh, that is ensured but uh, one interesting thing which came out uh, which is even true if not that uh, in non formal sector and uh, uh, formal sector Main activities <clears throat> because their trade union is there, and through that, uh, uh, there is and other things. But uh, in our country, very small only 10% uh, worker are in the formal sector, which is very surprising, and 90% are in the informal sector, for which not much is being done right uh, from the independence. And uh, so, this is a very important thing we should be. Uh, we should keep in our mind that all this talk we do is for the 10% of the worker, which is hardly say 4 crore or 5 crore. Perhaps uh, this uh, formal informal division also led to a situation where uh, informal uh, <clears throat> sector did not like to come to the formal sector because a lot of uh, formalities, a lot of compliances uh, has to be done. So so that that may be also one reason but then uh, <clears throat> this is the situation uh, over the year the good thing is that uh, now the acts have been uh, 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 which contain all the four important like safety industrial relation social security and uh, occupational which is under process, the rules are being framed from the uh, uh, central government has already framed it and the states are also in the process. One good thing, Amitji, which you mentioned, technology. Now, technology has come in very handy in tackling massive uh, uh, things like labor. And um, what we see that last... Uh, uh, 10, 10 years, 10, uh, 15 years, technology has been uh, used in a very big way to have these things. And perhaps uh, technology will has also given a platform where uh, industrialists or employers also benefit because uh, uh, there is both transparency and uh, uh, easily easy access, etc. So what we see that a lot of activities have come through technology and which has given relief to both uh, employer and uh, the labor. But as you know, uh, this is mainly for the formal sector. For informal sector, not much has been done. A uh, lot of uh, uh, discussion were there. But what we see uh, that in, uh, I think, 2014, perhaps the first time we saw uh, two good instruments which were brought by the government of India in form of insurance. And there, that was Prime Minister uh, so Bima Yojana and Prime Minister uh, Jivan Jyoti Bima Yojana, which gave uh, some uh, 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 instrument to informal worker also to subscribe and have some uh, social security. Uh, so this is the background which I wanted to give that how uh, this thing has evolved. Now we should come to the challenges. That what are the present uh, challenges which uh, I think this sector is facing. I think most important challenge is lack of trust. You, we all know that for uh, movement in this sector, there has Guruji, to be consensus. Guruji, yeah. To interrupt, sir. yeah. So, Abhita, whatever you have spoken till now, there has been technical, you know, some kind of disturbance, you know, that uh, okay. we've faced at our end probably. So, we probably missed out the quite a bit of it clearly, but. As we move along, now the connection seems to be pretty stable now. Okay. As we move along, as we move along, different interactions with you will make this much more relevant for the uh, viewers and the listeners to this. 
because we'll be releasing it through various mediums on the social media and other platforms. Arunji, what is the approximate labor strength of this country? Let's talk. Let's not talk about what happened 50 years, 70 years back. Uh, let's focus on maximum probably from 2014 since the Modi government took over. Because India is completely, you know, moving through a very, very fast pace of uh, changes and development dynamically because of the global dynamics as well. In the last 10 years, or probably now the current data, what is the total amount of labor force approximately which is there? And what is the basis of recording such data? You see, uh, uh, this labor survey, they bring the, um, uh, through the sample survey, it comes out. And uh, the last data, which uh, when I was in the ministry, it was that uh, almost 5 crore were the total workers and 10% was in the formal sector and 90% in the informal sector. That That is the situation and uh, this uh, 2021 census uh, is still in progress. So uh, data will be available when this data is released or uh, the survey of the labor ministry that will also throw that what is the latest question. But uh, th it has not changed and the percentage is the same. Mm -hmm. Numbers are increasing. And um, another uh, thing which perhaps uh, is uh, relevant here, that uh, uh, last year, uh, Government of India uh, opened a portal for uh, shramik, e shramik, and in that portal, which is very simple, it's a self-declaration, uh, and based on that, uh, your data is captured there. And I think uh, it has uh, almost 25 crore something. I don't have the latest figures, but uh, uh, 25 crore uh, people. It'll, till December, it was 29 crore. People have registered on that. Arunji, what is that, the what is the what do we break up of blue versus uh, white collar workers? And uh, do you think that the blue uh, white collar are also under the labor? Any worker, basically, it, it is worker. Um, right from uh, 15 to 65, if he is working in any field, he is a worker and uh, part of that. The working population who has got some so job. My next question is, 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 is 18 not the minimum age for being a worker or is it 15? No, uh, what I said that you talked about demographic uh, dividend. So internationally, this population, uh, the UNESCO figure which comes out, they, they categorize right from 15 to 65 uh, as working population. And naturally in our country, 18 is the correct uh, age from where one can start working. And 14 to 18 with some restriction, uh, there is provision that uh, uh, with uh, some uh, restriction, people can work, but 18 uh, onwards, it is fine. But like in our uh, country, 60 is the retirement is in the government or uh, is, uh, sector. But uh, then uh, till 65, they are uh, treated as a working population. And uh, the unorganized workers comprise 90% of this 50 crore odd working population? Yes, they are. And, and, and uh, we don't have anything for them. I mean, this all... Uh, for, uh, trade union and uh, these arrangements is only for the uh, formal or organized worker. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, if we see uh, the social security, social security which uh, also came uh, from the time of independence, we had two uh, statutory bodies like uh, EPFO, Empl uh, Employee Provident Fund Organization, and uh, the second was ESIC. Employee State Insurance Corporation and um, <clears throat> the EPFO, they look after the pension and provident fund portion of the formal worker. And uh, ESIC look after the uh, medical and uh, unemployment, non medical issue are also covered in ESIC. Uh, so, so that is there. But for uh, 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 informal or uh, non formal worker, Nothing was there till this, which I mentioned that we had uh, uh, two insurance scheme, uh, Pradhan Mantri uh, uh, Suraksha Bhima Yojana and Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti uh, Bhima this Yojana. You are saying, you are saying was, uh, sir, you are saying out of 50 crores, <clears throat> 35, uh, 
40 crores, 45 crores are informal and almost 5, 7 to 10 crores maximum could be uh, the formal or the organized workforce. That is what you are telling us. And yes, yes. out of this 5 to 7 crore organized workforce, uh, I think approximately uh, more than 3 to approximately 3 to 4 crores are in the central and state government uh, you know, departments? Uh, the central government uh, is 50 lakh uh, because uh, every year, uh, time when uh, DRNS allowance is announced, they give the data. So around 50 lakh is working. And of course, 60 lakh are retired people in government of India, but they are not working. So 50 lakh in the government. And I think uh, around 1 crore in the state. So 1.5 crore. Uh, we can take as uh, people who are associated with the government and oh. the rest are in the uh, in oh. the private or other all uh, over the PSC country sector. total state government employees would be only one crore yeah yeah uh, oh. government employee oh. there are uh, there are many employees which are not uh, like PSU also we are not counting here. central PSU employee is outside the uh, uh, central government I'm talking of people who are paid from the government registry. But uh, there are like many places, uh, uh, teachers, they are outside the government uh, thing. But of course, they are doing uh, state uh, services. They are part of the uh, organized workforce? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Outside government also, uh, if they are working and um, any government, uh, yeah, uh, in, Whenever a person who has no employer is uh, uh, informal worker, if he has no malik, he is himself malik. So, uh, but if he has some control, then like if he is part of say a school, then there will be a management committee etc. So he becomes a formal worker. So all, all the but uh, again, of course, uh, there is like there is a number that out of if the if there is a uh, formal organization which is less than 10 then we keep it in the non-formal because rules are not applicable to them or for uh, that matter uh, in some, like ESIC perhaps it is 20 that workers should be 20 then only they are covered by that so so the main thing is that 90% uh, people are working on their own and in this 90% of course very good people are also there. I mean, uh, who, 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 if you see, it will be a pyramid, but the bottom, uh, pip, uh, say, uh, almost uh, if you, uh, 70, 80 percent, they require a lot of protection because uh, they will, and uh, the most important is farmers, the worker in the agriculture, which in, employs almost 40 to 50 percent. So the bulk of this informal worker is in the uh, agriculture sector. On their own, say, aapka and, kya what do you mean by on their own, sir? Informal way, you on, on, their, on their own concept, what does it mean? Uh, on their own, uh, you, is it what we uh, uh, can mean, explain? Mean they're, they're freelancers, they're contractual. What do you mean? Because even, um, uh, I mean, contract workers are also working for somebody. No, you see. Finally, people are working for somebody. So even uh, say, uh, uh, only thing is that that relation should be uh, regular because uh, yeah, and there should be employer. Like a contractor in a contract worker, we have got a principal employer concept. Uh, one employer and one principal employer for contract worker because uh, the, the contractor who is employer will arrange the uh, worker. And it will he will take those workers to some place. That will be the principal uh, employer. Like many PSUs or even government uh, offices, they may be using contract worker. So so contract worker he has got some protection because he gets an employee. Or except for outsourced. Now a new thing which has come in the government sector is outsourced worker. That uh, there is some uh, uh, organization who provides you worker like in uh, i was in the commission so class 4 class 3 like in uttar pradesh class 4 class 3 are generally uh, uh, taken through this outsourced worker so they they also become part of uh, this formal worker 
but if he is working on his own he is not a, he has no employer then he is a non farmer and uh, which, which is very substantial number uh, in this also i would like to mention that uh, one atal pension yojana that is another instrument which came in that period only and that has provided uh, instrument to the informal worker of course anybody can subscribe to atal pension yojana but then uh, uh, he can subscribe to that and once once he becomes uh, get to age of 60 then he gets pension from uh, through that scheme and uh, government of india has uh, ministry of labor has also one manthan pradhan mantri manthan pension yojana through that also uh, informal worker can uh, are getting benefit and but their numbers are very less i think uh, if you see the pradhan mantri uh, manthan yojana 50 lakh people are uh, enrolled till now but yeah it, a beginning has been made at least there is something for the informal work sir if i am working contractually suppose i am working for a company and uh, and, and i have a talent which allows me to keep working and changing my employer after very short periods and i get all the you know uh, probably there are rules uh, under which i get compensated by epfo gratuity pension esic and all that uh, probably i do not know what those rules would be uh, as a an employee but say if i work for 6 months in a company then after another 2 months of layoff i work for some other employer <clears throat> at the end of the day he pays me money by salary by check and everything but uh, deducting my tds and salary tds or whatever so am i not a formal worker in that case or am i a informal worker you are a formal worker once you have a employer you are a formal worker and uh, in fact a very good thing have come in last 10 years uh, <laughs> like epfo earlier uh, you see uh, one good thing perhaps which i should explain that in labor sector uh, because labor ministry doesn't have that much of paraphernalia like uh, rural development they have their personal right up to the villages so here employer concept was uh, involved from the beginning and perhaps this is international also that uh, worker means there should be some employer so the ministry or the government works to the employer all benefits flow through the employer but uh, that created problem if you are changing employer then uh, perhaps many time it was difficult to get all those benefits so this was taken care of in 2013 14 uh, uh, for epfo universal account number concept was introduced and now the employee also gets a number earlier it was employer only he used to give his number now he gets a number from uh, directly from epfo also a uh, u a n number and that is permanent like aadhaar and it continues so this this helps in linking because he had he may have had uh, 10 employer is so that epfo number is that universal account number that an employee carries is it in the public domain the, the employee knows it the employee has uh, the number with him i am an employer i am going to be employing some people and i want to check the authenticity of the applicant suppose somebody says i was working here or year and year last three employers i was working and this is my experience so ye jo verification hota hai all this verification checks for employee because india is a very dense very complicated and a very very you know uh, country which is in the threshold of a lot of uh, attack from various corners so we have to be very careful uh in terms of uh, the kind of people who we get on board uh, because uh, I, so something like a universal account number <clears throat> which an employee has now and so when he goes to another company there also he has the same account number wherein that a provided one has to be deposited do you think that is something which is accessible as an employer can i suppose somebody somebody applies to me for a job and and i and i, I, I first of all can i ask him for his employee provident fund account number and if yes can i check the authenticity of the data of his experience work experience or work chronicle from that particular epfo linkage at least for around 2013 boarding uh, i think uh, i don't know the 
<clears throat> latest thing because uh, in my time the UN concept the UN concept was introduced uh, but what you are saying uh, gives a very good idea that perhaps uh, uh, offshoot of this particular arrangement which already uh, uh, EPFO has and maybe uh, I'm not sure we have, they have got this arrangement but they can do the, this particular thing that can share with the employer the, uh, the details of the employee and uh, that may help uh, employer in engaging people like Aadhaar. In case of Aadhaar, this facility is already there uh, because that has been made with this purpose. But UN was basically to facilitate the employee, but uh, uh, it can be used in this fashion also. So I'm not sure whether this is happening or not, but this is a good point uh, which can be used. I don't know. By um, EPFO in, and uh, in fact, right now, both of us do not know whether the same is uh, in practice or not. You, both of us are not aware of it uh, because that is what yeah. I assume you should so probably somebody who is currently in the pro, in the ministry would be able to give us a fairer idea on this uh, because we keep hearing about uh, you know kind of issues on verification frauds <clears throat> even in the case of top organizations uh, who are big international giants anyways now sir what are the various relevant acts in brief in the next 3 minutes could you take us through the various relevant acts and to which section of employees do they apply to, right from regular uh, blue uh, white collared employees to the construction worker, uh, gig workers have got nothing. I mean, up to the construction workers, what are the different kinds of acts uh, and how the codes have been, have evolved over the years, the labor code. And today, where do we stand with respect to the laws that regulate the safety and the economic uh, you know, rights of the labor of this country? Okay. First, uh, let me clear that this uh, building and other construction worker, they are also informal worker they, uh, because they go and work uh, from place to place and uh, they don't have the facility of EPFO or ESIC. So they are also treated as, uh, as informal worker. But there is an act, UCW Act, uh, which gives certain protection, certain facilities uh, there. Uh, the interesting thing is that in the labor sector, what has happened that uh, this all welfare scheme, which came after independence, they have been funded through uh, employers, through the industrialist. Uh, uh, it, uh, government uh, contribution is uh, minimal or uh, even uh, non-existent uh, in many places. But uh, it is based, like EPFO, EPFO or ESIC, it is the employer who has to contribute and employee also uh, give a part of it. Uh, and there are like BOCW, in BOCW, the construction activity from that assess is taken, 10% of the uh, project is taken as uh, 1%, 1% of the project is taken as uh, says and uh, it similar has uh, been there for say to be bidy worker and so on the DG liver welfare he looks after all these funds so this is also very interesting that uh, this mechanism has helped in providing some uh, facility to the worker and uh, even the uh, pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana or pradhan mantri Jivan Jyoti Bhima Yojana or Atal Pension Yojana is all funded through the either employee or employer. So that is, is one thing. Now, uh, as is in the, um, there is also a huge criticism on the unutilized funds lying in these uh, funds, unutilized amount of money lying in these funds. Like we have thousands of crores lying in the US OF. <clears throat> or, uh, you know, thousands of crores lying that was lying with the Ministry of uh, Environment and Forest before it was uh, given out, you know, in the last uh, two, three years or five years time. This was after the Modi government came to power. That money was distributed to the states as well. So where do you think the Labor Ministry stands in terms of, in terms of optimal utilization of such huge amount of fund that is connected from the employers primarily and then the employees as well? Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, in some, because uh, uh, there is no connect, you see, like building and other construction worker, the money is coming from the builder. 
and uh, then it goes to the government city and then it is spent on the construction worker now uh, uh, the construction worker is maybe who is working today uh, money has come yesterday so that linkage is not there and especially in the bucw uh, because a lot of funds were generated as you know that uh, construction is a big activity in our country and lot of funds were generated so in the beginning i think there was some problem uh, putting in place all the infrastructure and other things understanding the concept also uh, like i remember uh, kerala uh, kerala came out with the pension scheme now when you have a pension scheme for uh, uh, construction worker then it is life lock it is not one year program so uh, a lot of uh, due diligence you have to keep like epfo is doing they also pay pension so they have to see that uh, when they uh, announce their uh, uh, interest rate then they keep it in mind that they, they remain viable so uh, uh, we cannot see it as how much amount is spending if it is for pension then of course you have to keep it for longer period but if it is for say one time marriage grant or uh, education grant then it is a short term thing. so that also is a thing which has to be kept in mind while assessing or reviewing the balances now does we come government, to the sir, labor force so which uh, are sir does does the government have any fund which uh, can be utilized for the purposes of calamities like uh, that struck the world in covid period and migrant workers and migration and all that become became a you know achilles heel in the government's you know entire machinery <laughs> do you think there is anything or do you know about anything which the government has as a fund which can be utilized for such kind of calamities unforeseen or force majeure act, uh, acts of of nature do you think there is something like that which the ministry has you see all all these fund has been uh, there is a act and which provides for the uh, objective that uh, how money will be collected and money will be collected for what purpose so i do not think uh, this natural calamity or other things are taken Uh, are included in that because no but everybody is thinking of important things which is happening and not being addressed calamity is uh, once in a very a long time so that is not uh, I, i don't think we have funds uh, to cater to that need in fact uh, the government has got this disaster management and they put funds for this thing for natural calamity but then again it depends covid uh, which comes in uh, once in 100 year type of uh, calamity it's difficult to meet that uh, thing and uh, we have to think loud and come out with innovative ideas to solve them uh, but but for small calamities yeah that can be taken care of in fact social security is for that purpose that he fall sick then how uh, i mean he can manage thing etc so no, sir, uh, social security about, will force uh, majeure could be uh, not necessarily a once in a, a millennium it could be something like uh, an earthquake it could be something like a flood like a state of bihar which keeps facing flood every year i do not know how that happens but it happens so now uh, uh, you know these earthquakes uh, tsunami may be probably once in some decades but uh, and but with the global warming and this kind of environmental issues cropping up the ministry should definitely look at something for the workers <clears throat> you know some some kind of assess for the workers which can take care of uh, you know these uh, frequent calamities if i may say so what is your view on that uh, i think uh, uh, Mirji, you see, uh, if there is a flood, uh, you take even the Pradesh, Eastern UP has similar problem, and Bihar, then in flood there are schemes, and that scheme does not differentiate between worker and non-worker. I mean, who is whoever is affected, depending on his maybe economic condition, he gets help. So, so it will be a duplication in that way. Uh, bureaucratically, I find it. that it's better to uh, uh, meet it through the uh, your uh, uh, calamity fund because if flood is there that of course uh, the, all the uh, relief etc is given one to all whoever is eligible so there so is a it should not be brought difference. here 
there, but, there is a small difference because what what covid has taught us is there is a concept of migrant labor <clears throat> which is a very very big issue now this migrant labor cannot be compared to a domicile or a local labor whose challenges would be totally different in the case of an earthquake in bhuj then what somebody would face coming all the way from bihar uh, because bihar and up they uh, contribute to the maximum workforce uh, migrant workforce in the country as far as i understand and if they are contributing now these people are totally different in profiling when we compare them with any other people from the any other states so there should not be uh, you know kind of uh, uh, mixing up of uh, these funds uh, which could be utilized separately or which could be have uh, which could be earmarked separately for the migrant labor which became an unprecedented issue and till date it lurks very very clearly in the memory of each and everybody in this country and the worldwide the kind of uh, you know uh, flag the government faced because of the issues faced by the migrant labor not the local uh, population you see uh, uh, amiti i will uh, disagree you see migrant worker problems uh, can be divided into two part one is uh, some problems which all migrant workers face but uh, the uh, this problem which happened because of the covid was simple and but yes we are wiser after this incident the simple thing was that they should have been facilitated to go back to, to their home but uh, anyhow that time uh, the decision was that this will be spread the uh, infection etc and so they should be kept they should stay wherever they are that was the big i think uh, point like you see now uh, you see uh, this operation kaveri from sudan people are coming it was within the country so uh, i think in future if this thing happen perhaps you put so many trains so many buses and just transport them to their villages and then you naturally you have to uh, see about, uh, how to tackle the problem parunji it is not only about that issue of uh, they returning uh, back home safely now in cases of calamities which strike natural calamities or disaster what the migrant labor max, uh, basically the biggest challenge that they face is the economic deprivation <clears throat> uh, you know and they contribute so much to the national growth because they are the people who go all the way from their local place and they then go and contribute to a state's economy uh, another state's economy the country's economy so the go the government of india and the state governments have i feel a responsibility towards uh, creating some kind of a cushion for these kind of migrant laborers also from an economic perspective uh, in especially in cases of Uh, calamities or unforeseen circumstances it could be through insurance <laughs> it could be through a fund it could be through compensation it could be direct benefit transfers whatever it is but it i think that is what uh, probably if not there it should be done yeah, this can be this can be uh, one of the solution but like what we have learned from the past experience that uh, you see the migrant workers again are differential uh, Uh, the top uh, uh, people in the migrant worker they have the capacity to absorb the uh, natural calamity or the problem maybe uh, they require very short term interventions but uh, the uh, bottom pyramid people they require in uh, regular income like uh, manrega was used in a very good way uh, last time for those uh, state because you see they are are originating Uh, dist- uh, state in the India for migrant worker and destination is- state. So, like Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, they are the originating people will come to this place. So, Manrega was used that if you are in the village, if you are, uh, you can work. You can work and earn some money. So, this thing is there so that they tide over the period and then again go back. People uh, after once this uh, calamity was over. then they went back and started uh, they were uh, working there so but yeah insurance uh, also because uh, naturally this will require funding so that can be also thought of and perhaps uh, after considering all the uh, parameters and things uh, this can go ahead skill skill profiling has been into the uh, you know 
kind of uh, it's a big question area or uh, you know area of contention which uh, the ministry has also been formed in 2014 and the work of uh, you know labor management skilling has been given to a separate ministry uh, when the first time you know sarvananda sonowal took over as the minister of skill development youth welfare sports and everything <clears throat> and then uh, you know uh, the itis you know the you know the you had a department called the director general directorate general of uh, labor and employment which took care of the skilling in the iti levels and all that where do we stand from those areas and from that perspective uh and now now this uh, uh, training portion the iti portion has uh, uh, been shifted to the skill department and that is rightly also because uh, uh, a lot of emphasis has come on skilling the industry they are always saying that uh, people we are getting the worker we are getting are not uh, such people whom you can give uh, or take work directly they require some of the hand on so so this skill perhaps uh, skilling thing is important that uh, they get the skill and in no time when they are, go to a, a factory or workplace they start working so so uh, this has happened and now uh, national skill mission is also there there is a national, uh, skill mission corporation is there and uh, the whole thing i mean in the country and lot of people have been skilled in, uh, in the past uh, and um, very various good thing which i can mention is that industry has been also involved earlier it, it was thought that academic and uh, teaching institution in one silo and uh, the fact in uh, now now lot of internship uh, apprenticeship lot of things have brought into and perhaps uh, this gives a lot of handle to the industry also to train people so that they get people with adequate skill in list you know uh, when we talk about uh, skilling and all any which way there's a different area altogether but uh, Uh, as you said earlier there is a labor survey going on the report is yet to be yet to be released <clears throat> so uh, will that labor report also contain the skill profiling i don't have uh, detail of this thing um, generally uh, skill profiling is not done it is more of employment unemployment and uh, how much uh, they were engaged etc so it is more of from the labor perspective that uh, how uh, how is the profile of our worker like one interesting thing perhaps <clears throat> you may be also uh, aware that uh, our female uh, uh, participation rate is going down and uh, earlier it was almost 20 25% and now it has come to uh, uh, say 10 12% so lot of uh, research and thing why this is happening in our country that female participation has gone down and many explanations are coming but uh, this is the indicator because uh, when you see the demographic dividend then you know that 88% of your female they are unemployed they are not working they are not participating and uh, if country has to move its gdp you mentioned about the 5 trillion gdp then their contribution is very important i mean it cannot be that only male will do that if they also uh, give an opportunity and involve in this process our uh, growth and pro progress will be faster and that is very important issue which must be flagged and uh, addressed do you think that uh, uh, child labor is a big problem in this country uh <clears throat> you know uh, we are still in a developing country stage and uh, in the situation especially what you see in the uh, villages the rural area of india uh, there you find uh, this issue that a lot of uh, underemployment unemployment because agriculture again is activity which do not give you uh, good employment around the year it is very seasonal so oh, so to augment their income i think child labor is also because uh, generally uh, people are profit motivated but the good thing which we have 
in 86 we had this uh, nclp national uh, child labor project uh, and uh, that tried to tackle uh, this problem but this problem is uh, widespread and uh, it has got a natural thing also that if the level of family income goes up then this problem will come down but if uh, the uh, income level of the family is uh, major then they will resort to such practices and now with the rte the right to education that has also become mandatory that uh, for all that all uh, uh, all uh, children who are school going must go to the school so uh, uh, with the coming the rt now education department and labor they are trying to tackle this problem and uh, as the prosperity comes it is coming, but like one dollar per day income, two dollar per day income. You find that people below poverty line, uh, that number uh, is getting reduced. Except during COVID time, again it was reversed. But uh, the progress which country is making, uh, I think uh, that will also help. But why is there so much of uh, you know hula balu or so much of outcry around the employment rate? I mean, in this country, and does the labor ministry? also work towards compilation of such data, uh, which is uh, under huge question, right? Over the last 10 years, especially uh, all, you know, organizations, all uh, civil society organizations, they have been questioning the data released by the uh, NSSO and others. Uh, do you think that uh, it is a cause of, cause of concern for the uh, country's growth going forward? You see, all these surveys are very important because it's like a thermometer. When you have a fever, then you use your thermometer to know your physical condition. So, and temperature is not important. Whether it's 99 or 100, anything above normal, that means you require something. So, these surveys, they are not very exact. They are pointers. They, uh, they help you in knowing that you are standing where and it's a ball figure i mean it's not we so i think this survey uh, i sometimes in some places people feel that uh, this data should uh, uh, meet whatever they like but data will throw what is the truth is there and uh, it's always better to accept it and then try to uh, uh, find out the lessons and how to move it so I remember uh, one secretary, survey, I remember one former secretary of the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region, Mr. Inger, Inderjit Singh. I'll, I don't have a problem. You know that the way we work and talk, we try to keep things, uh, you know, below the, uh, you know, uh, below the chain, but above the belt. Uh, but at the same time, uh, no holds barred is important uh, when it comes to discussing things at least uh, you know, trying to touch upon things. Indarji Singh was very clear. He said that when he came to the ministry as a secretary, the first thing he wanted to release a tender for was a tender to see as to what is the outcome of so many tenders that have been released <laughs> for the development of Northeast. So, so you know, sim similarly, in these surveys, one survey has to be done to see what has been the real, uh, what you call efficacy and uh, what do you call uh, conclusivity of these surveys which have been going on for so many last so many years. So my next question to you, sir, is the relevance of trade unions in the uh, in the cause of concern as far as <clears throat> labor of this country is concerned, uh, right from Mr. Lokhande, who is known as the father of trade unions. So today we have uh, so many you know associations working at loggerheads. Uh, with uh, their own agendas in mind, uh, right from uh, the public sector unit unions to railway board unions to coal India unions to, I mean, you talk about the MTNL, you know, BSNL, all these unions, uh, I mean, what has been the relevance up to even the private unions, the <laughs> those which are running a campaign against the so-called loss-making online, uh, you know, Western world-funded companies who are killing the entire uh, unorganized sector, uh, you know, bit by bit, uh, like the Confederation of Association of Indian Traders. So all these associations and traders, 
right from public to private ones what is the relevance and how does the ministry uh, take into hold uh, all their grievances and suggestions because uh, uh, no one seems to be satisfied ever and uh, since it's a 145 crore country now, uh, I'm not very sure 2047 uh, how effective all these movements would be and what is the labor ministry thinking of trying to have some kind of a centralized approach towards redressing the grievances of these forums, of these trade unions. Because as far as my knowledge goes, there is no directorate which handles trade unions separately in the labor ministry. Uh, you see, this trade union arrangement starts from the workplace. That uh, if there is a company, so uh, <clears throat> the problems will be arising from the company, and both employer is there and employee is there. So trade union has to uh, see that uh, the rights of employees are not infringed, and whatever things are provided should go to them. So one area is there. Once the uh, there is failure of the talk, etc., then ministry rules comes. And uh, there also we have, uh, as I said in the beginning, it's a uh, uh, constitution. Uh, we have uh, kept them in the concurrent list. So both, if it is central PSU or uh, if the problem is more than one state, then the central labor commissioner, uh, that organization, uh, this comes to them under Industrial Relation Act and they try to sort it out. And in case of it is a state uh, unit, uh, then it, uh, it goes to the state labor commissioner uh, uh, hierarchy, and they try to sort it out. And um, you are very right, uh, as uh, we say, see that the pendency of the cases in the country, uh, the number, etc., is there. So uh, one can be not very confident that this IR uh, thing is working in uh, right spirit and there perhaps uh, uh, improvement is required and the but the basic concept is same you see we should be truthful and uh, industrial uh, the trade union should see that they concentrate on their jurisdiction the employer employer should consider and concentrate on their uh, jurisdiction and uh, with that uh, trust, if they talk and know each other. Because you see, uh, generally the negotiations are very fruitful because the employer will come and say that, okay, you want raise, so this raise, this much um, money is required. Now from where this money will come? You increase the productivity so that this uh, can be funded from there. So that way, I think if both go with the open uh, mind and uh, with uh, some amount of trust and perhaps that will help us in moving uh, forward and growing. Sir, your views on the gig economy now? Uh, please come on. Your, your views on the gig economy? Gig, I guess. Ah, it's a, and the, the, this is a new terminology which has come in the labor sector and um, uh, especially in our country because uh, in our country, everybody wants to get a permanent job. You see a lot of uh, queue for any government job, even if it is a lower job. You uh, advertise one uh, PN post and you get 10 lakh applications. Now, gig worker is an uh, important thing which has come that uh, um, only for say one hour, two hour, uh, worker is available and you do that. So uh, this is a new thing and I think problem multiplies because if a worker is a say, casual worker, then at least he gets uh, work say uh, one month in a year or two months in a year. Gig worker is uh, highly that way and it is more in the, I think, uh, technology areas because their cost is very high and uh, like if you go to a doctor, uh, you, you can't hire a doctor for the whole day. You go and uh, get his 10 minutes and you pay for that. So it's more like that. Sir, uh, so so what is the difference between, I mean, what is the difference between an entrepreneur and a gig worker? For a, for a platform worker and an entrepreneur? Because entrepreneur is also not responsible. He is working on his own. Man marji ka malik hai, you know. A gig worker bhi hai. Jab marji chaha hai, aap kar diya. 
लॉग आउट कर दिया और बैठा है घर पे आराम से तो व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस दे सेड दैट वी आर क्रिएटिंग एंटरप्रेन्योर्स पार्टनर्स यू सी अगेन आई आई विल सी इट द लेवल ऑफ इनकम और ही इज जनरेटिंग यू सी द टॉप पिरामिड पीपल गिग वर्कर ही इज एंटरप्रेन्योर but the bottom like suppose in my house i have got to now i say you come and do this now he is also a gig worker he was at my place for 2 hours then he goes away for rest 6 uh, hour he will work some other places but his condition his things are different i mean uh, he may require government support in case of uh, distress in case of problem so th- that was my point ki gig wor- gig worker especially poor gig worker i think that is a uh, thing for uh, whom government generally thinks and work for them ji i to start after talking to you all we are at the last 2 3 minutes of the discussion now <clears throat> uh, you know we can continue for next 1 hour 2 hours but uh, we'll wrap it up in next 2 minutes uh, arun ji i feel get a feeling that it's so difficult to draw a line you know from the ministry's perspective between who an organized worker is who is unorganized who is formal who is not formal who is a contractual worker who is a freelancer who is an entrepreneur who is a gig worker who is a platform worker i mean when it comes to taking advantage you know people want to be on this side of the line when it is talking about responsibilities uh you know towards the employer towards productivity everybody wants to be on the other side of the line so it's not an easy task i must tell you uh, because human nature is about you know uh, you know contract with convenience and now coming to final one or two discussions with you i mean what do you feel is the future of uh, especially the uh, you know expats because the world is breaking pretty fast expectations are growing very fast and we can see there are multiple evacuation missions happening now every year what is the future of expat workers is india a safer place safer bet then what do you feel that these guys who go to the middle east and such war torn zones just for the sake of employment because we can't provide Uh, do you think that is and then mr modi has a mantra about creating entrepreneurs right from the pushka walas to the startup uh, technocrats and unicorns and some some kind of cons and cheeses i don't know what it means all these fancy words so what do you think is the future of the expats in this country in the beginning you talked uh, amit ji you talked about demographic dividend and uh, now india he is moving uh, to place where we will we are having 68% of our population as working population and uh, as you know especially the developed countries they have a problem of uh, their population is dwindling down so so i mean uh, there is uh, opportunity and uh, so that that is one factor that uh, expert worker with better working condition Uh, should be there in the future and um, uh, the second thing is that the image the perception about india is also rising in international arena earlier our voice was not heard or uh, not given attention to but now uh, indian voice is gaining importance and uh, because they know that uh, if you want uh, worker then this is one of the Uh, source place so this should be used uh, diligently by our country our policy makers that uh, they should uh, ensure that when persons are going they get a good deal they get minimum uh, okay, social okay. security Arunji, and other Arunji, factors aruji aruji samajh have you got the point sir and last two questions i mean because i don't want to make this a uh, uh, kind of uh, you know i don't want you to i mean this is this last part that you spoke i'm sure there is a great opportunity as a spokesperson for the mea now but uh, any which ways uh, let me let me take you back to two more questions sir uh, one is uh, you know with language being the focal point of regional divide politically 
that is now the you know game that the political parties are playing at a regional level how much does it affect the labor ministry <laughs> tough question <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, uh, you are talking about a broad thing na if if the uh, it is uh, within the india, country sir talking uh, about the... india regional divide regional divide based on language is what the political uh, game plans are now and <clears throat> labor especially the contractual and migrant laborers uh, you know how much difficult it will be now going forward because integrating the uh, workforce uh, you know kind of uh, economy of this country and at the same time politically the game plan is language based division how do you think the labor ministry is going to handle this problem <laughs> it's a difficult question and i think uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, because one has to understand the nuances also what you are speaking uh, but uh, what i feel that india is a very plural country with lot of uh, variety and, uh, and diversity and uh, numbers are huge it is not that uh, numbers are huge so sir so sir i am a bihari sir i am a bihari let me put it in a example format i am a bihari suppose main bihari hu main gaya hu bangalore kaam karne i go to bangalore to work for a company uh, which is into huge construction which is a 30000 crore giant and there the elections are due and what i can see is that even the bjp's website now starts with a kannada dialect you know it is then you have to click the hindi or english option to get into that so now if that is the level of politicization around languages what is the future of me as a bihari in bangalore <laughs> i think uh, that survival instinct if if language uh, you see if language becomes barrier then the person will certainly see that he will overcome that because he has to survive and uh, sir, sir got your answer uh, sir finally five suggestions for the labor ministry and the government of india uh, uh, what i would uh, say that <clears throat> i am very happy that Uh, the ministry is using technology to reduce the uh, problems the access problems uh, to the uh, employer and employee and uh, perhaps a, uh, and a good thing will be that like the instrument which we had in the shape of atal pension yojana or uh, pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana or pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima yojana that this more of this should come for informal worker because um, that will help them if uh, they understand the benefit out of it they can uh, join that and get the benefits so the, uh, and it uh, morally we feel that 90% of informal worker are um, better customer for labor ministry than the uh this 10% formal worker which uh, has got adequate uh, protection support etc so more con uh, concentration should be given for this informal worker uh, wherever it is possible sir five suggestions five suggestions for labor ministry yes for the labor ministry i think uh, one is uh, i can't be very specific because uh, i think uh, uh, that much uh, uh, thing but uh, the direction in which these uh, sessions should go one is the, the, they are going doing is the technology use of technology uh, another thing is that uh, yeah uh, in coming time what we are seeing that this artificial intelligence and robot uh, this is also becoming a challenge and uh, the formal sector uh, they would try to um, i mean uh, close the gate through this uh, robot and ai so uh, ministry should also consider and think that what will be the impact on uh, of these things in our country and accordingly we should prepare for that uh, and uh, the other suggestion which i think i already said that more instruments for uh, non formal or informal workers thank you sir i think that one suggestion from our side could be keeping in mind the kind of plight the migrant workers especially from states like bihar 
uh, Uttar Pradesh faced uh, when they had to suddenly come back from various parts of the country to their respective states. Uh, I mean, especially uh, those from the state of Bihar, wherein the government now is fighting very hard to tackle the opposition, the divided opposition, and that too from people like old friends, like Mr. Nitish Kumar. I mean, uh, I'm sure some kind of a direct benefit transfer to these migrant workers would hold the government and the current ruling dispensation in very, very strong uh, position. And uh, I'm sure the Labour Ministry would be helping, would be able to help the government in devising some kind of a data, if not already done, about the migrant workers, uh, you know, that uh, got displaced from their locations of work, especially during the last three years. And uh, even till date, most of these people uh, really struggled to go back to their places of origin of, of work uh, from where they had to come back to their local places. And even if they have managed, they are still struggling to get work because, uh, you know, once displaced, this is, as you said, it's a country of demographic, uh, you know, uh, dividend. And uh, it's not easy yeah. to get back your position once you are out of it because the competition is too high and uh, nepotism and uh, corruption i'm i'm unfortunately uh, with the kind of population that we are faced with is something which is again uh, kind of an antidote to the population uh, you know uh, the huge population upsurge that we've seen over the last few decades we may celebrate uh, one part of it as demographic dividend at the same time the challenges of population and the challenges that the labor ministry faces because of this huge population uh, is something which is unenviable. And until unless all the ministries work in you know unison, like the WCD, <clears throat> the Ministry of Skill Development, the Home Affairs, the, the Finance Ministry, until unless they work in unison and support the Labor Ministry, it's going to be quite a wash going forward. And 2047, uh, I'm not very sure if this continues, we'll see a better India from the Labor perspective. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Jain. Thank you, thank you.